Uganda say we are very rich. Uh huh. So, <laughs> but we are not. I am not. I didn't look for money. I'm not a rich person. <laughs> a lot of people will not believe that. Why? Well, you see, whether you believe me or not, but when I was in the village, I didn't stay there to make money. I stayed there to, to assist people. So by the time I left the villa, I didn't live with money. Well, it's another very great day in the city of Abuja, the federal capital territory in Nigeria, as we meet a very important woman, one of the golden mothers of Nigeria, a former Nigerian first lady, Hajia Dr. Mariam Abacha. She has been very synonymous to development in some certain areas, especially in the health sector and the family empowerment sector of this country. She was the first lady of the Federal Republic between 1993 and 1998 when her husband, the late General Sonia Basha, was the head of state. We've been searching for her for a long time, but today we are in her abode somewhere in the heart of Asokoro Abuja federal capital territory of nigeria you're going to join me as i go into the house and do justice to issues that relate to human development and governance with the former first lady hajia dr miriam abacha follow me let's go in Today is another very beautiful, lovely day in the city of Abuja, Federal Capital Territory, Nigeria, West Africa. As we meet a very iconic lady, a woman of substance, a woman who has contributed her own quota to humanity and to especially the development of women in Nigeria, in Africa. She was a member of a different era. In our own era, development was very of most importance to the people to the policy to the politics of the land and she did her own she contributed her quota and a lot of people applauded her contribution to humanity her excellency dr mariam abasha the wife of the late leader former head of state federal republic of nigeria general sonny abasha today uh, a neminate organization from abuja came to give a posthumous award to the general to validate his contribution to history and to political science in nigeria and by extension his first lady our golden mother hajia miriam abacha was also extended with the accolades and by this evening after almost three hours we are lucky to be with her uh, 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 dr miriam abacha we're very very proud to be with you we thank you for the time and uh, how do you feel today that the old world came to this house to honor you and they said oh your husband really tried that we are now seeing a new direction in history which it appears that history is reappraising him and uh, giving him a different credit how do you feel ma um, thank you. Um, my husband has always been what he is, uh, what he was. Um, there's nothing new or different from what people are saying about him. It's just that um, the truth has started coming out. The truth has started coming out? Yeah. Hmm. May, uh, will you say that the truth was hidden for so long? Will you say a lot of people had a misconception about your husband and uh, maybe there was a sustained uh, propaganda to promote that misconception? Mm -hmm. Call it sustained propaganda, that's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what has life taught you really in the last few years and how have you been able to 
uh, carry the uh, challenge of this family. I mean, this great family, Abacha family. Everything seems to have been on your shoulder. How have you been able to tag along with the challenges, ma'am? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. By the grace of God, yes. Uh, let's go back to things you've done. Um, you in, during your time, there are a lot of development. It, you are a peculiar first lady who contributed to the development of women under your leadership. The National Hospital Abuja was established, and uh, the family support program reached out to a lot of uh, places across the country. And uh, you also institutionalized the Office of uh, Ministry of Women in Abuja at the Central and across the Tarsi State. What drove you then? And why did you, why were you extraordinarily uh, innovative toward development? <laughs> this is Nigeria. Nigeria is part of Africa. Uh, we needed the development and um, whatever it is you can do to, to uplift the nation, the people and the women, the children, whatever. We tried our small best. Mm. Was that what we're doing then? Yeah, sort of, yes. You know, some years ago in Kano, during your sister, but they asked you the question that, what is the biggest lesson life taught you? I think that was March 11. We had the birthday on March 10, and we had uh, uh, Mrs. Nana Kunadu. Uh, uh, March 4th, okay? We had uh, Nana Kunadu Rollins and uh, some other eminent Nigerian at the event. Now, let me ask you the question again. What have life taught you 21 years without General Sonia Abasha? Um, patience and um, gratitude to God Almighty. Whatever situation you find yourself in, you should be grateful. You um, should be thankful to Almighty God. And um, um, that's what we are taught. And that is what has sustained us, um, depending on the grace of God. Will you say life taught you a different thing about friendship, about uh, uh, humanity and all that? What have life really taught you? What have you seen that is different about people, especially? There's nothing different about people. From Adam till date, people are the same people. Um, there's nothing new. So I'm not, um, I'm not disturbed by anybody or by anything. Um, we are just being ourselves. We are just being people. Mm. Yeah. So I, I, I saw the grandchildren, you've been able to raise a lot of them. Uh, the last time I came to this house, I saw young people, they were so young, small. Today, most of them are now grown up, the grandchildren. How are you enjoying the role of a grandma? <laughs> a mother is also a grandma, it's all the same. All children are children, you take care of your children mm. and your grandchildren. Mm. I think you should ask them, not to me. <laughs> To talk, but uh, did you think people have been very? Uh, do you think people have misrepresented your husband so much? Because I can see a kind of atmosphere, cold reaction today, despite the happiness, the fact that people came in to say, Oh, well, we are we're, we're celebrating this family. Do you think Nigeria has misinterpreted the role of your husband in policy development and in political uh, development as well? I wouldn't say that Nigeria is a very big country. Not everybody has television or watches television. That is even if Nepal permits. You, you've seen how epileptic Nepal is today. And um, people don't even listen to radio and so on. So people don't really know exactly what is really going on, even to, up to today. In the rural areas, even in the cities, people don't bother. A lot of people don't bother to know what is going on, except those that were really um, interested in politics or something. People don't really bother to know. So people won't even really know so much. Talking yeah, about people not really knowing so much, are you happy with the way the politics is going on? You look at Nigeria today, and you have sort of stories on the development. Uh, you look at the woman, uh, women mortality in hospital. You look at the development in the hospital. The other day, the f present first lady said there was no single drug in the Asura clinic and all that. But in your own day, you are one of those who contributed to health care, especially for mother and child. How did you feel with the development of health in this country? Do you feel our politicians have lived to the billions of giving adequate uh, dividend of democracy? Nigerians have tried. We are trying. Nigeria is a big country. It's very, very populated. We are very many. I don't think we will we'll always have enough to go around. We are very many in number and um, 
the military regime is very, very different from the political regimes. And the political regimes um, use a lot of money, especially sustaining the Senate and the House at federal and state levels. And um, a lot of money is good to their salaries and their well-being uh, instead of building hospitals and schools and roads and so on. So that is why Nigeria is always broke and we are managing and this. But I think, um, I think, I think the, the next level will, will address these problems, hopefully. We hope. The next level, that's the, that the campaign theme of the present regime. Well, we, uh, well that, that's the slogan. So we have to go by the slogan and then we have to pray for the slogan to succeed. Yeah. yeah. I want to ask you a very sensitive question. Your own family is one of the six great family that formed the, that's the Waidama dynasty that created present modern Borno Empire. With what's going on in Borno in the last 10 years, the killings by Boko Haram and all that, as a mother of the nation, how do you feel with that place, where you came from, where you, where your dynasty emerged from? Do you feel that government has not done enough to eradicate the problem of killings and uh, all sort of things that is happening in Borno especially? <laughs> Things are not happening only in Borno, they're happening all over the place and um, it, it happened even in Abuja, didn't it? Yes, of course. Then. It's happening all over the place. Yes. Um, you know, um, when, you have, when you have natural resources, you are not going to be left alone, just like Sierra Leone, that have a lot of diamonds and Liberia and, and, and that other East African countries. Congo, uh, all these other other countries have problems. Once you have oil or, or, or mina, other mineral resources, then you, you, you should expect problem because there's interest there. Mm. So I think it's up to the government to negotiate. I said it when I was given the award for the Northeast. I said the government should negotiate because we are killing ourselves and killing ourselves doesn't solve the problem. I was once the Africa First Ladies Peace Mission leader, and um, I, I, I believe that with dialogue, we can solve a lot of our problems, if not all, at least a lot, because um, we can negotiate with those people that are sponsoring the problems. There are people behind it now. Those boys don't just touch all those things by themselves. So I think... Um, I think there are so many ways, so many very, very easy ways to 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 handle this situation. You live in the carrot and stick policy. I mean, carrot and stick. He said you could dangle the carrots and use the stick on the uh, on the on the on the militants. The militants are our children. Those that they kill are our children. Those who kill are our children. So they are all our children. So the best is to 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 bring them together, and and make peace, and bring some sort of understanding because the whole thing is poverty, 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 poverty. There's um, people are looking for food. There are a lot of children coming up. There is a lot of education, no work. So I think, I think the federal government, state governments, up to local governments, should go out and embrace these kids these young men, even sometimes, unfortunately, women, then they should embrace them and, and, and teach them a lot of good things and make them to be okay. When a child goes astray, you embrace that child and you tell him the do's and don'ts of life and so on. You don't just go beating, 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 beating. Really, uh, uh, we were also talking about the girls' education in the north. It appears that a lot of molestation is going on. You talk about child marriage and some other things. Uh, during your era, those are the kind of things that you invested your time in and your ideas and all that. How do we give the children, the, the, the girls' education? How can we enhance it in the north, especially in the north? I'm going to school. There are a lot of schools in the north. A lot of girls do go to school. And they go to even up to university level, and um, I think the northern girls are okay. They are fine. They are okay. They are coming up. You know, it takes time to 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 build something, and they are coming up. They are trying. The governments are trying. The private schools are trying. They are trying. The governors. I want to ask you this question. In your own time, you help your husband 
to give direction to government there was energy in that office of the first lady there was innovation there was a whole lot of portfolio of ideas but today you look at first ladies of state governors and you wonder some of them are even buying jewelries you you, you see a governor's wife that is putting on jewelries putting on a, a glasses that is so costly and all that what advice are you going to give to wife of politicians politically yeah because you are a golden mother and it should disturb you ma that things are going the way it's going you hear about women taking money on behalf of their husband and all that achieving properties and all that how do you think the first lady should advise or to help their husband to achieve politics the other side of the matter i'm not going to comment on it but the first lady either from the national or to state of the local government um have a responsibility of taking care of their locality either at federation level, at state level, or at local government level, I think they should come out and, and assist their husbands, assist their people, and um, build schools for them, teach them, give them a lot of training and so on, so that um, a lot of people are self-employed. Mm. And there's the reduction of, there will be the reduction of, of poverty, and then... Um, that will bring a lot of happiness and contentment among people. Mm. And there won't be a lot of um, bitterness and malice mm. in, in, in the society. In the society. Yeah. You hear about kidnapping, you heard about uh, stealing, you have a yahoo yahoo, all sort of crime that were not there in your own days 20 years ago. When you were even growing up, it was about innovation, it was about creativity. But today now you're hearing young people building houses of 60 million, young people doing all sort of scams to raise money. We just got the issue of the 80 that were arrested by FBI over credit scam and all of things. What do you think young people need to do? And how do you think parental care should come in and even government itself because people are saying the parental care is dropping because of the economic uh, chase arounds and all that so how do you think parent can how can our youth be so productive um is the responsibility of the parents to to train their children to advise them and to pray for them and to pray with them and the society also should pray i when i pray i pray for society i pray for the whole world i pray for everybody i don't pray for only myself and my family although i pray for us but i pray for everybody i pray for peace i i pray for good health i pray for happiness i pray for prosperity I, we have to pray we have to assist ourselves and um, the government uh, there is the orientation agency. I think that agency National should... National orientation agency. Yes. God bless you. Noah. Because I'm very, very that disappointed. Noah should come up and do a lot of uh, sensitization within, the, within the, the country for the people. And then um, there are a lot of programs that were introduced before that were abandoned. Not because I did them, but um, I, think, I think they should be allowed to come back to assist because while I was there I started the family support and I, we did the family economic advancement program and that started giving some hope and assistance to people and I remember at that time there are some people that were working abroad they started coming back home they said okay there is now hope that we are going to work we are going to assist our people even up to as far away as Australia Nigerians started coming back but look at what is happening today because there's not much to do. Nigerians were going, look, look at what South Africa did to Nigeria and so on. It's, um, uh, it's, it's something, I think the state governments and the federal government up to local government should come out and assist. And especially these returnees from South Africa and any other part of the world. Nigerians are suffering all over the world. If the situation is good for them, they wouldn't have gone out. But now that they have gone out, I pray that they come back. And, 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 and the, the people at home, from the federal to state government, should embrace them and, and, and treat them as, as one family. We're even talking of assist them. We're talking of empowerment, but uh, uh, talking about uh, South Africa is a very, very uh, emotional one because we look at what the general did for the country when he was in power, and uh, a lot of time Mandela will come and see him here, and there's a kind of diplomatic relationship. When you heard about the xenophobic uh, action on Nigerians, how did you feel as the first lady who saw everything then? Even uh, all the diplomatic back door and everything, your husband was contributing, not only South Africa, Sierra Leone was there, uh, a common support in Sierra Leone, in Liberia, and some other 
uh, African countries. So how did you feel with the xenophobic attacks and what do you think General Abacha would have done? They were doing it before and they have done it very, very, very vehemently this time, which is very, very unfortunate. And I pray it doesn't happen, not only in South Africa, but in any part of the world. And please, I want to ask Nigerians to also mind their business. They shouldn't go out and begin to do things that are wrong and 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 degrade themselves, degrade their country, degrade the leadership, degrade all of us. Because anywhere you go, they see a Nigerian person, ah, you are rogues, you are crooks, you are this, which is very, very unfortunate. I hope this South African thing will teach us a lesson to really belt up and, and rise up and become our brother's keepers and become good people and become honest and become uh, good ambassadors of our country and our people. Uh, it took me almost three, four years before getting this interview. We've been chasing you for long and it's always not easy. At times either you are out of the country or you are busy doing one NGO program or the other. Why have you so much remained so, rec uh, maybe let's say recluse or uh, why, is, why did you keep yourself so much out of circulation and uh, we have to do a lot of research, a lot of call-up and all that, almost four years to get you. <laughs> for you. As a widow, I'm old. What do you want me to do? No, I want you to keep I'm helping. Taking care of my good people here, my good friends, my best friends. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because we felt that your orientation will always guide the nation. I mean, a lot of young people, and we felt. I want you to assist. I now have made a foundation, Saini Amari Abacha Support Foundation, and then we are, we have we have registered the foundation. We have uh, we are trying to bring it up, but you know, I'm not a rich person. <laughs> a lot of people will not believe that. Well, it is, whether you believe me or not, but. When I was in the village, I didn't stay there to make money. I stayed there to, to assist people. So by the time I left the bill, villa, I didn't live with money. You know, people say, oh, Mrs. Abacha? No, it's not true. With all this loot that you have, of course, I have to be very rich, but I am not. <laughs> How do, you, how, do you, how do you convince us about, convince Nigerians, especially people that have this perception about, I mean, y maybe your husband or the family? What did you earlier on say? The propaganda. Yes. Uh, the yes. propaganda say we are very rich. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but we are not. I am not. I didn't look for money. And there was a time the SSS was congratulating me through one of my staff that I uh, was mama. Her record is the cleanest. <laughs> she didn't do anything. Go and go to the SSS and find out that uh, all these former heads of state checked on everybody and they found that I didn't work for anything or I didn't do anything. I was busy making schools and hospitals and charity and everything, uh, making my own programs to help people. So I didn't. I didn't, I didn't work for money in the villa. I didn't work for money even before villa. But, but how, do you, how do you feel when you see all these kind of stories oozing out from different places about your husband that he looted this he did it how do you feel when people paint he him he's not now yeah. he's just a pain but you know the uh, pains do fade after some time everything fades yeah. everything in this life fades so all this will fade away when it's a matter of time yeah. the truth has started coming with this xenophobia of uh, south africa people have started talking about abacha positively even from the south this that and all what not so you see um this is life the whole thing was um, was was intentional, hmm. and now when they started having problems, they started crying. Oh, Abacha, we wish Abacha is there, but uh, this is life. Hmm. Nobody should last forever and ever and ever. Even people like Mugabe still left power, and he, he even left the whole world now after ninety-five years. So this is life. I think we should take things easy. We should stop all this religious problem, uh, tribal problem, uh, regional problem, this, that, this, that. What is our problem? We are all visitors on this planet, and we are all going to leave this planet. So why don't you just treat this planet well, treat ourselves well, so that by the time we leave, we live happy. Mm -hmm. Running off now, what do you do in your pastime as a... What are your hobbies? My hobby is like people like you. <laughs> it's people like you. I always have visitors. 
and um, people have been giving us awards and even me I've been receiving awards and all one so um, um, my hobby is uh, still helping people people still come to me please madam my children school fees please madam this that this that all sort of excuses but if we try small out of nothing the kind words will keep them happy even if there's no money this age you are so still beautiful and you're yeah. charming. Yeah, what's the secret of this beauty? I mean, yes. and they, yeah, they say you're Shua Arab. They say, oh, they, what's the secret, man? And they say, oh, Mr. Basha is beautiful, charming. Mm. Thank you. Secret, man. My secret? Yes. Well, I don't have any secret. I'm just me. <laughs> um, is it, maybe it's the combination of me, the Arab, the European, and the Kanuri, and the African blood. And you know, when you mix bloods, it, it comes out fine. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you're, you're, you're a wonderful mother. And, and running up to, um, uh, uh, what, what's your philosophy really about life? What's your philosophy of life? Um, to be patient and to be contented. This is what my father has always taught me. To be contented with what you have. To, to manage the situation, whatever situation you find yourself in, you should um, accept it. I make the best use of it. So if God puts you down, treat it well and thank God. Maybe tomorrow it will change. If God puts you high, then treat it well and use it to 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 to, to assist other people around you, so that they are they are they are brought up also. On the last note, say something about General Sonia Basha. How do we paint him? What do you want the world to know about him? A lot of people have all sort of horrible misconception, and uh, it's like the the the, the, the nays are having it. But we are the want to say you are the yes. So, but what? Who is he? And what do you think the world don't know about General Sonia Basha, your husband? Yeah, people know him. A lot of people do know him. It's just the propaganda. But what I know about is the. Uh, He's a very kind, gentle, honest man. He's, he's very honest. He's very straightforward. Uh, his yes is yes and his no is no. And that's final. Tunji David, the founder and CEO of Farmer Life Investment Limited, an agricultural digital crowdfunding platform. We are a Nigerian company duly registered by the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Our endeavors into the agricultural sector cuts across uh, farm livestock, cuts across poultry. A lot of things, crops, rice, potato and all. We are here not just because uh, it's a bandwagon, we are here because we want to make impact in the life of not only Nigerians, Africa and indeed the entire world. We are aware that by 2040-2050 the population of Nigeria will be doubled, close to 400 million. What plans are we making to bridge the, the food gap? So we have come in to bridge the food security gap. You know, why empowering the peasant farmers? We are aware that um, the peasant farmers constitute about 30% of the farmers who produce 30% uh, of the produce that comes to the, the market. So in the light of this, we feel it is necessary for us to empower them while creating wealth for the investing public who eventually becomes our ally. Her Excellency, Dr. Mrs. Mariam Sonia Basha was born as Mariam Jida in Kaduna on the 4th of March 1947 to the family of Sheikh Mohammed Jida and Nana Yagumsu Nasara, a Kanuri princess of Borno Emirate whose father has a German origin. In tracing her genealogy, Mariam is a direct descendant of Sheikh 
Ibrahim Wedama, an Arabian who settled in Kanem Borno around 16th and 17th centuries. The Waidama family was to become one of the six great founding families of modern day Borno under the leadership of Sheikh Lawan El Noor from Wu Sheikh Jida. Ajayamarian's father is a direct descendant. The Waidama family later settled in the town of Mustafa Lawanti, now under Mafaluku government area of Borno state. Her Excellency Haji Amira Mabaja began her educational pursuit at Tudunwada Primary School and UNA Sabongiri Primary School in Zaria, Kaduna State. She later graduated from Dala Girls Secondary School, Kano. While in school, her disciplinarian and leadership qualities came out as she rose to become a patrol leader in the girls' movement of Borne and Girls' Guild of 1961. Student in the secondary school and her teacher describe her as a calm, reliable, and disciplined student. During her secondary school education, she distinguished herself as a promising public speaker in the debating club and excelled among her contemporaries in sport as a table tennis champion. She got married to young second lieutenant Sonia Abasha in 1965 after her secondary education and grew into her role as a wife and a dedicated mother with commitment and devotion. During the Nigerian Civil War, Dr. Mrs. Mariam Abacha participated actively in the mobilization of officers' wives by visiting the wounded soldiers and gave aid to legion of them. At the time when her husband was active in the war front, Haji Amara Mabasha was an active member of the Army Officers' Wives Association, AOA, and later became the 12th National President of the Association when her husband was appointed as the Chief of Army Staff. During her tenure as President of the Association, she established some laudable projects such as the Vocational Training Center and Naowa Secondary and Primary School in various military formations across Nigeria. When her husband assumed office as Head of State and Commander-in-Chief in November 1993, she became the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. As First Lady, she ensured that the benefit of Petroleum Trust Fund PTF was extended to the armed forces and the police force. During her tenure as a first lady, it is to her credit that the following laudable projects were executed. The Family Support Program FSP, which is an umbrella program for various initiatives such as the Family Economic Advance Program FEAP, the Family Support Basic Education Program, the Legal Aid Clinic and African First Lady Peace Mission, among others. Ms. Abaja influenced the creation of the Ministry of Women Affairs at the center and across the United States of the Federation. She equally influenced the establishment of the prestigious National Hospital Abuja, Noma Hospital in Sakoto and Kaduna were built by Excellency Mariam Abacha in addition to some VVF centers established in some states of the Federation. Dr. Mrs. Mariam Bacha was responsible for the establishment of national program on immunization NPI, which is established across all states in the Federation till date, and which is equally one of her golden legacies. Dr. Mrs. Mariam Sonia Bacha is the founder of Defense and Police Officers Wives Association, and she equally registered the microcredit scheme in Washington, D.C. Her Excellency Dr. Miriam Sonia Abasha is a recipient of many awards at the national and international level. They include an honorary citizen award in one of the states in the United States of America. She also received three honorary degrees in law, letters, and philosophy from some universities home and abroad. Dr. Mrs. Mariam Sonia Abasha has attended and chaired some national and international conferences. She was at Oman, Jordan to attend the International Steering Committee of the First Lady Summit in 1995. Mrs. Maya Mabacha 
is the first African first lady to address the Organization of African Unity OAU Summit in Harare, Zimbabwe on peace and conflict resolution in Africa and on humanitarian issues. It is on record that she chaired the Prevention meeting in Dakar, Senegal, which paid way for African participation in the main conference in Beijing, China. And she was the chairperson during the African First Lady's Peace Mission in Abuja, Nigeria. She is an avid writer and poet. Her Excellency Maryam Abasha has to accredit the following publication titled Home as a Base for Peace, published 1987. Naowa, a symbol of motivation, published in 1992. These are in addition to seminal papers presented at national and international fora and which have significantly formed the basis of major government policies such as the establishment of the Directorate of Food, Road and Rural Infrastructure, DFFRI, the National Directorate on Employment, NDE, the People's Bank of Nigeria, PBN, and other people's centers, social welfare, and rural development programs. Hajia Dr. Mariam Sonia Abaja is a nationalist in her own right, a patriot, a dynamic leader, a wonderful mother, a committed wife, and a secular religious woman. Her hobbies include reading, listening to Islamic safe and sermons, cooking sports, and humanitarian activities.